Peter Griffin, and I'm here at the Museum of Television and Radio to commemorate Family Guy becoming the longest-running show in television history. For 60 years, Sunday has meant God, football, and Family Guy. And later, to a lesser degree, The Simpsons. Premiering in 1952 as a recurring sketch in the popular Dow Chemical Follies, Family Guy has survived 19 cancellations, two assassination attempts, and a pretty good ribbon by those South Park guys. Well, tonight we take a look back at classic episodes from our first three decades. Oh, here come some tourists. I know, I'll sit here and pretend I'm a wax figure. Who is that? That's the fat idiot from The Family Guy. Ugh, I hate that show. Me too. Raleigh Kids Cigarettes is happy to bring you Family Guy, the story of an American family named the Griffins. This is Peter, breadwinner and head of household. Lois is the name of his wife. These are their children. This is Chris, the firstborn son. This is little Stewie. Oh boy, he's a handful. Meg. And introducing Doodles Weaver as Brian the dog. We don't trust just any cigarette for our children. Raleigh Kids is the only cigarette made for tiny hands. It's why it's the playground favorite, right kids? <laughs> <laughs> and now, Raleigh Kids, also the makers of Kinder Coffee, invite you to watch Family Guy. Dad, I overheard the fellas talking. Can I ask you a question about girls? Of course, son. You're a young man now. It's natural to be curious. Face pop. What's knuckle dunk? Oh, atomic test. Put on your glasses. Never mind what your friend said. If you want to have fun with your girl, try dancing. It's fun and good for your health. Ah, uh, swell, that's helpful. So what's going on if a guy says a girl has a red scare in her Harry Truman? Fence! Oh, look, here comes the milkman. So convenient. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tom Tucker, and this is the Radio 5 News. Our top story this evening, songsmith Elvis Presley will be appearing on the Ed Sullivan Show this Sunday night on that never-gonna-last fad called television. And now a word from our sponsor, Fred Trump Apartments. If you don't want to live with blacks, Fred Trump. <laughs> wow, Elvis Presley. Can we get a television set? Sorry, Chris. We don't got the money. I spent our entire savings building that stupid fallout shelter we never get to use. Why don't you just buy a TV for the weekend, watch Elvis, and then return it on Monday and say it doesn't work? Boy, even in the 50s, you're a scumbag. That's a great idea, boy. But hang on. Why don't I just get a job to help pay for it? What? No wife of mine is working. There's underpants in this house that need starching. I don't want to go to work in soft underpants like some Nancy boy. I want to go to work like this. Stiff as a plate. That's underpants. <laughs> We got some time before Elvis. Can we see what else is on? Sure thing. We now return to 1950s sci-fi, which is always a man in a silver suit battling a monster. Leave us humans alone. It's 1994, and the moon belongs to Earth. Uh, uh. Rawr! It's safe now. How's the soil, Professor Knockers? It's good. 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 Good evening, I'm Tom Tucker, previously of Radio 5 News. Tonight, I bring you a special report. Women in the workplace, hilarious or disturbing? I am a 1950s man, speaking in a stilted manner, seemingly with no self-awareness whatsoever. I am shouting for some reason and will now suddenly be replaced by crude graphics. This factory has been beset by women. Is your factory next? Lois, that's you! You took a job? 
sorry, Peter. I wanted to tell you, but you were so dead set against it. Damn right I'm against it. If God wanted women in the workplace, he'd have made them alcoholics. You're quitting that job tomorrow. No, I'm not. Quiet. Elvis is on. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis Presley. Huh? What? Elvis Presley is white? Cleveland, did you know about this? Come on, Donna, let's pick up some gizzards and fried skins and head on down to the juke joint. Tonight, it's gonna be jumping. And it was jumping. It really was. But I was banished to the sidewalk because I called one of the band guys a bad name. I thought you were bringing the TV back. I changed my mind. This TV is awesome. I've been watching it all day. You can keep your job so we can afford this thing. That's great news, Peter. You know, Lois, I had an idea. Instead of eating in another room and talking, what if we bring the food out here and never talk again? That's a great idea. Shh. Are you looking for the perfect breakfast meal? Try Post Raisin Bran, made with raisins, which are grapes that have been dried in the sun for a long period of time and bran, the hard outer layers of cereal grain. Along with germ, it is an integral part of whole grain. When you eat raisin bran, it fills your stomach and keeps you from feeling the sensation of hunger. Hunger being pangs in the belly as a result of lack of nourishment, thereby sending signals to your brain telling you, hey, I'm hungry. And when you hear Mr. Hey, I'm hungry, be sure to have a hearty bowl of post raisin bran. Again, made with raisins, which are grapes that have been dried in the sun for a long period of time. And bran, the hard outer layers of cereal grain. Along with germ, it is an integral part of whole grains. Ghost raisin bran. Made with raisins, which are grapes that have been dried in the sun for a long period of time. And bran, the hard outer layers of cereal grain, along with germ, it is an integral part of whole grains. Post raisin bran. Boy, these commercials go by fast. You can barely absorb any of it. How you doing, Peter? Can we get some raisin bran? Do we have any raisin bran in the house? Just working day after day. I'm exhausted, and I miss my family. It's made with raisins, which are grapes that have been dried in the sun for a long period of time. I gave my notice, and tomorrow's my last day. So I guess we have to get rid of the TV. By the way, Chris and raisin bran are at raisin bran practice. Peter, I got a surprise for you. Raisin bran? Television? We can't afford this. You quit your job. This is what we were making on the line. The only reason I wanted to work was to make this for you. Oh, Lois, you're the greatest. Ah! I guess this is why women shouldn't work. <laughs> to the moon, Lois! To the moon? What, what does that mean? You know, to, to the moon. Okay, you're threatening to punch me so hard, I'm gonna fly to the moon? Like, like it's funny to hit me so violently, my body will fly out of the atmosphere. Well, it's not funny anymore. Good morning, family. I'll have my regular breakfast and the newspaper, please. Okay, here's your highball, a grapefruit, and a one weird serrated spoon. And razor bread? Sorry, there's no newspaper. Chris quit his paper route. What? My jobs are for bozos. Besides, I won't be around to work. Me and my pals are going to Woodstock to smoke dough. No, you are not. Chris Griffin, you are grounded. <laughs> oh, I hate you. Now I'll never get to see Sha Na Na. Hello. I just moved in down the block. My name's Herbert, not Roy Mitchell. So if you see news reports about a Roy Mitchell from three towns over who was accused of all sorts of nonsense and left in a hurry, it's got nothing to do with me. Because again, I'm Herbert. Mom, Dad, Chris is gone. He went to Woodstock. Now, Meg, nobody likes a snitch. I'm not a snitch.